Well, good morning YouTube. Today is gonna be something new. Uh, we haven't done a video like this. We haven't spent much time on maintenance or shop videos. As you can see, we've got the JCB and the silage baler and the fertilizer, where is it? Fertilizer spreader uh, in one of the shops here. And we are, we're gonna dig a bit deeper on maintenance here in the next few weeks. January seemed to have gotten eaten up by uh, not only some darn cold weather, but some some accounting and some year ends, some real boring book stuff. Uh, and anyway, so we're gonna redeem ourselves on some time on equipment here. And we are actually gonna be diving into a bit of our winter check program. I got a buddy of mine, Tom, from Noble Equipment coming out to, to give us a hand and go through some of this stuff that, uh, that we can't do. The silage baler is pretty new to us, so some of the specs and things uh, aren't uh, we're not as fluent on so obviously we're gonna be diving into the winter check program and we'll go from there Thanks for coming all this way, Tom. Tom from Noble Equipment down in Nobleford, Alberta. Yeah, so the winter check program, pretty much uh, you have a, an inspection at a fixed rate and you go through the machine and you create a list for the customer of recommended repairs. You can do urgent repairs, advisory repairs. So the customer knows that uh, what has to be done and what can be done is preventative maintenance if he chooses to do so. And then we like to let them know how things are wearing because you know, the equipment wears. It's a really good snapshot of the, yeah, that's uh, right. the condition of the equipment. Yeah, and any any annual service items, then we have you in the best shape for the, the next season. So like I say, we've, we're a pretty big fan of these winter checks because we can do things in the shop that maybe we wouldn't be able to do uh, as more of a reactionary repair in the field. Like uh, we want to calibrate the scales or recalibrate the scales on this machine. Uh, we bought it with a scale system included on the table so that we know the weight that we're putting out and actually cat uh, catalog it by field or try to reach the right bale weight. So we want to get a little bit better uh, calibration because we just put this thing straight to work last year. So these lists, like what these guys do on, on equipment is, is different by every piece, but like there are a lot of checks. Uh, every bearing, every chain, bushing, everything, everything does get checked. So um, it's, it's not the typical check that you get when you're going to a oil change store and they're going to give your truck a 50 point visual inspection. This is way more thorough than one of them gimmicky inspections. So yeah, we're, it's working well for us and we're happy to see it. Like, th like just looking at this list, if you're ever considering a winter check, It'll pretty much tell you, just ask them to show you the list of everything that they're gonna go after. Like I say, we just have that one extra request to recalibrate the scales and nothing to it but to do it. Great. Let's go. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. We are trying to get the scales on the back of the silage baler to calibrate for some reason we can't, but uh, we'll get her figured. Good thing uh, uh, Tom's here to figure it out. I don't think I could do it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> This is a test weight, a known test weight for calibrating scales, but she's frozen into the ground by at least a couple inches, and I don't think we're getting that out of there. We'd have to hit it with a loader to bump it out of there. Yeah, I'm not breaking my ankle trying to get it out. All right, option number 17. Hey, Tom. Both my test weights are frozen three inches into the ice. I won't be able to get them out. I can go get those uh, suitcase weights. Okay, I'll get on the phone. Okay. Who are we calling? Superman. No answer. Oh, we have 2,000 pounds of uh, tractor suitcase weights and they just went to the neighbor's place. 
on Friday, so three days ago. And now we need them <laughs> uh, to more accurately calibrate the scale on the back of a silage baler. So uh, they're not the easiest things to move around. They're on a cart, but I guess uh, we're gonna have to go get them. So stay tuned. While we wait for those weights, there's a few things going on in the baler. Tom is well on his way on a few things other than the scales. So uh, he's gonna continue doing that winter check and I'm gonna keep busy by dropping the oil and doing an oil change on this fast track. So we'll keep moving here. Time to make a mess. this leaks when you take the filter off. Well, that was nice and uneventful. Uh, I don't know about anyone else, but I almost have uh, PTSD or some type of stress from watching that uh, Millennial Farmer video where he broke an oil filter off. I think they were doing an oil change on a sprayer and uh, they broke the housing off inside the housing on the tractor and it was just a big mess and oh man I hope I never have to experience that but after watching his video there <laughs> every time I go to break an oil filter loose now I think of that video so uh, he's almost uh, scarred me a little bit but then well trained us too because you never over tighten an oil filter so hey Tom should we uh, start the motor on the JCB to pump out all the oil? Not a great idea? Okay. Just go ahead and not do that. <laughs> She's still tinkling. Uh-oh. Phone's ringing. Hey, Stu. So here, here's where we're at, though, is uh, we've been trying to calibrate it just with uh, a known test weight, like myself or Tom standing on the baler, but... Uh, yeah, those, those weights that you brought over to your place on Friday, I think we might need more than a couple because uh, we, we've tried to calibrate it with two or 300 pounds of just us standing on it and it's not enough. It doesn't let it calibrate. So we are assuming that we're going to need at least five or 600 pounds. All right, and you don't, whatever ones are on your uh, that tractor, just leave them. We don't need that. We don't need all 20 of them. So, okay, thanks, dude. All right, yep, yeah, see ya, bye. Tom, the weights will be on their way shortly. That's so silly. Literally three days ago, the weights left to go to Stu's place and uh, never fails. Haven't touched those weights for six months and now we need them. Never fails. Leave a comment if you think anyone thinks that uh, the professional opinion of a professional mechanic thought that my joke of starting up the motor to pump out whatever oil was left was funny. I don't think he thought that was funny. <laughs> oil filter. We just put a bit of oil in a filter that's being mounted sideways or if we were filling it right up we'd pour it in the small holes on the outside so that it gets filtered by the time it goes in the motor but on a filter that's being mounted sideways you'd have to spill it everywhere to uh, pre-fill it so not possible in this application but we do like throwing a little bit in just so that the uh, the filters get for the the plies and the filter get just get wet it'll uh, 
help build oil pressure a little faster in the motor when we start it up. Dude. Thanks for coming to the rescue. Isn't that like I was just saying to Justin, I haven't touched those weights in six months and now all of a sudden need them. We had to boot the camera or the monitor and the cab up from, from scratch, but the weight was already on the machine. Even though we had already zeroed it before, we think uh, there was a glitch because it was reading zero and there was 829 pounds on there. So we think there was a glitch with it just booting up from scratch. Oh. One more hernia. It's reading the right weight, but it's reading it in kgs. And we were wanting it to read in pounds. So there's a setting somewhere on the display on how to toggle between metric and imperial. That's where these winter checks, we're believers we're gonna, or we have in the last couple of years, been getting in the rhythm of doing these winter checks because you, um, you can fix all these little things like a leaking O-ring and spring adjustments and belt tensions and all that just just that much more accurately when you're not in a hurry and you just know when you go to fire this thing up in the spring or summer that it's 100 percent ready to go just hook it up and uh, bob's your uncle so again kind of the interesting thing about being able to do this simple task of a scale calibration during a winter check is found out that uh there was an issue toggling between metric and imperial. So our, our friend Tom here, our tech, uh, did a software update, figured it out. We're off to the races. This is something that would have never got done to this attention level or quality in the, in the field in the middle of the season. So it's the winter checks that kind of let stuff like this be possible. So now we know uh, we've put 829 pounds of weight on and it read exactly that. So we're perfectly calibrated. Now we just, uh, Got to yank all these weights off. As you guys have probably seen in some videos, uh, some familiar faces here. Uh, we'll start with some maybe more formal introductions because they haven't been done yet. I'm trying not to throw YouTube in quite everybody's faces yet, but uh, this is my, my friend and next door neighbor, Stu. Uh, as uh, the little character on the Grinch movie would say, he's my best friend. That's my best friend. <laughs> uh, Stu and I, uh, well, we're neighbors, we're really good friends, and we farm together too. So if anyone's ever kind of wondering what, what our relationship is, Stu's got a, a bunch of land in the area, and it's a, we got a pretty good relationship, a bit of a give and take. He needs some help farming, and so do I. So we kind of just give her shit together, right? So, Stu, I'm gonna need to borrow 20 bucks. Really? Yeah. I wanna go for wings tonight, but I spent my allowance. <laughs> my wife cut me off. We bought a drill. Wow. <laughs> On the good news, we'll get done seeding a little faster this year. So. Did you get the one you wanted? I think so. <laughs> it doesn't match the tractor. It's not, it's not yellow. 
Anyway, not to tease you guys, but uh, a lot of you have been asking uh, about what happened at Agritechnica and the drill that we ended up shopping for and finding over there. So, so you guys called it in some of the comments. Uh, we ended up going with a horse. Uh, it was a drill we were looking at. Uh, we thought we were gonna look at it pretty seriously going to the show. And like I said earlier, we needed to get a drill that checked a lot of boxes. It had to work in no-till sod applications. It had to work in black dirt, cultivated stubble. It needed to work in a lot of applications. So the Horsch system with their mini drill attachment and some of the options that are available on the Horsch really gave us the confidence that it's a drill that's going to do everything we need it to do. It's going to seed the products that we need it to seed. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we can buy it locally. We can get it serviced locally. Um, customer support, all those other boxes uh, we're able to get checked uh, from Horsch as well. So uh, we ended up making a deal on a Horsch avatar through Alberta Egg, which is only 20 minutes away. So, uh, and we can pull it. Uh, we have enough horsepower, it's perfectly matched uh, for that drill. And it's high speed too. So, so with it only being 26, we kind of wanted to get over 30. 30 to 36 would have been probably ideal for us, but it was a tighter spacing. So we're at six and a half inch spacing now, which was huge. Uh, we are anticipating with this 26 foot drill, we're gonna have about a 40%, 40 or 42% increase in productivity out of the horse drill because of the speed and the design and capability of it so uh, that's where that 20 bucks comes in Stu. Uh, Tom and I are probably going to go to the hotel you can come too but uh, we're probably going to go to the hotel tonight and uh, have a beer and chicken wings so I spent my allowance from my wife and uh, Probably the next four to 10 years worth of allowances here on this drill. So as you guys know, no jokes, we're, we're selling quite a bit of equipment now uh, to help pay for this drill. With interest rates the way we are, we cannot afford to go and spend this kind of money on, on a line of credit or a loan. So we're trying to free up a pile of money. Uh, you guys have seen some of the previous videos of the equipment that we're selling. We've already sold more than half of it. We still have a few more pieces to sell. Uh, if anyone's looking for small square balers, round baler and pull type sprayer, those still need to be sold. The fleet's gonna be kind of lean and mean for 2024 here on the farm, but desperate times call for desperate measures. We need to make it work. Uh, we need to get into a bigger, better drill, faster drill. So going for chicken wings. Let's celebrate. <laughs> Here's the 20 bucks you wanted. Are you buying my friendship? <laughs> 20 bucks for the drill here. Oh no, that's 20 bucks for chicken wings. Hey Tom, we're going for chicken wings. Well, yesterday was a great day. Uh, got the silage baler, winter checked and well. Does everybody know what time it is? It's tune up time with Tom. <laughs> A little bit of twine under here. As anyone knows, seeing twine wrapped around a bearing is the worst thing you can see, but uh, this one's got some net wrap that it picked up in the field here. Better get this off before Tom sees it, eh, Tom? As most of you guys probably know, but when there's twine or net wrap or something wrapped around a bearing, not only does it wreck the, uh, re usually wreck the oil seal, but it's also an insulator, so bearings and equipment run hot. There's no point having it wrapped up with uh, more insulation than it needs. If anyone's ever seen the safety cut system uh, that Crohn's got, uh, this washer at the top that's got this gear here, uh, and there's a retainer ring at the top of this shaft, and there's a spring inside. So if, heaven forbid, if you do hit something uh, and it shears, it doesn't it has a, a roll pin inside that shears and when it shears this whole plate lifts up so that it doesn't contact the, the turtles or discs beside it and then it just spins freely and uh, it, it gets hung up by this retainer ring at the top here so um, that's Crohn's way of well, uh, offering a safety mechanism to their cutter bar. Tom, 
This is everything that I've got for consumables on hand. Uh, could we just go through real quick while you're here that I've got enough module components, both left and right hand. Yep. Um, one of those modules has been hit, um, so we'll need to just probably swap out the roll yep. pins and the okay. spring in that module, but just make sure that everything I've got for consumables is enough for the season. Okay, so we got two right hand hubs here. That one needs to be repaired. This is left. That's a spare gear for the left. That's a spare top. We've got bearings and seals. Nut and the top piece there. That one looks a little bit worn. So we have one spare complete of each. And then we have one hub. And then uh, this is a spare left hand thread. We got lots of the top nuts. Left and right. Left and right, because these are uh, rights. These are that's right. Those are left. That's left. That's right. Got lots of those. There's only one extra set of bearings. Lots of roll pins. Lots of pins. A couple extra spring washers. I think we're in pretty good shape. Okay. Just so everyone understands how the safety cut system works, uh, these are your modules. So these are attached to the cutter bar. And as you can see, this one has hit a rock and the roll pin has sheared. And as you can see, we were showing you earlier that this has spring, sprung up, up against the retainer clip. Uh, so this one needs to be repaired. But what we do, um, it might cost a few more dollars to get set up when you first buy a Crone cutter bar, but we like buying modules. So we'd call this whole component a module. Uh, because in the field, we can just zip this off real quick with an impact gun, bolt another one on and be go good to go in a couple minutes. And then later that night when we come back to the shop, actually take this apart, clean it up real good and nice on the bench, uh, put the new roll pins or whatever parts it needs on the bench versus trying to do it in the field. Yeah. Uh, either way, uh, personal preference. Um, I kind of like having a vice and we don't have a service truck as fancy as this in our field. We are usually just working on the tailgate of a pickup. So if we can just rebuild this one real quick, put some new pins in it. And I guess, do we have enough to do two of each? Do we have enough? Is that left hand or right hand? These don't matter. It's the nut that's left hand or right hand. And this, this just gets pressed on top. This is left hand. It's got the groove in the top there. Okay, so we could, in theory, fix this one and assemble another left hand and have two complete modules ready to go You'll need another bearing hosing then. Okay, we'll add that yeah. to the list of parts that are coming. Sounds good. Awesome, and then tons of blades. I'm gonna refill all the holders on the triples, obviously. Absolutely. Uh, gotta look good while we do it. Maybe some paint touch-ups. Uh, we have spring plates and both sizes of turtles. You didn't find any wrecked turtles though, did you? Nope, no, they're all in good shape, yeah. Okay, so that's... Easy enough when we got some spare tines too. Yeah. So you got three, three of the one size turtle and one of the other size. I think we probably only need one, one of each spare, but. Okay, so we're good on turtles and we should have everything but a bearing housing. Yeah, so we'll get for a left hand. Uh, bearing housing and a spare set of bearings. Okay. Add those to the list of parts that are coming. Absolutely. Okay. Sweet. Nice way of uh, storing the blades that are, you know, being wrecked on a daily basis. Well, hopefully not, but um, these containers are on each of the set of triples, and it even gives you the part number so you can keep track of left and right hand blades in the field and take this opportunity just to make sure that we are perfectly stocked up. Might as well start the season with these full because we are likely going to need them. Yeah, perfectly stocked up for the front header. It's funny, when I first started farming, 
I used to buy one box at a time. I wasn't farming very many acres and I could kind of, my goal was to get the box of blades to last a, a season or a year. And I don't know if I've grown in acres or if I'm hitting more rocks. <laughs> I seem to grab three or four boxes whenever I'm buying them. Well, the winter check program's choosing to be pretty uh, valuable here. We found a cracked spring plate on one of the cutters. So that would have, a, it was actually cracked in four places. So obviously this was a turtle that that saw some impact at some point. So we caught it before it broke. So that would have uh, been a downtime uh, issue in the field. So that shows a lot of value to this system. Uh, the winter check program, didn't find really much wrong. We found a turtle out of time on the rear cutters and we found this cracked spring plate and a couple springs uh, for some belts that were not out of spec, but on the lower end of spec. So we've uh, made adjustments to some spring tensions and stuff like that, which is to be expected. They're new cutters and obviously they got to break in. So belts and spring tensions and that have broken in now. So now they need to need their first adjustment. So all that's been done and caught uh, prior to it being a problem. Um, and then going back to the baler, uh, you know, kind of the same thing, a bunch of uh, chain tensions and things like that that had to be looked at. Uh, just because it's again a brand new piece of equipment. So all those things were caught, lots of things were checked. Uh, we found a bad knife. Okay, a rock must have gone through the baler and wrecked the knife. So we found a few things there. Again, to give that winter check program a bit of value, uh, I'm actually you know, super happy at this moment that, uh, that Tom was able to find, uh, find a bearing where the flange plate, uh, some bolts were loosening off. And it was gonna become an issue. If those bolts were to loosen right off and fall out, uh, that was a very quickly rotating uh, fast rotating part. Uh, if if that would have come apart, <laughs> that, that would have been a downtime thing, but that would have also caused a bunch of damage. If you guys want to see more of this kind of content, I know a lot of our videos to date have been in the field, farming, drones, cinematics. Yeah, if you guys want to see more of this, if you want to see us, you know, tearing into stuff and being more mechanical, you want to see the maintenance side of things and us pretending to be mechanics, you guys want to see some more of that, just tell us. Leave comments, let us know what you want to see. Or if you have more ideas of stuff you haven't seen yet and you want to see, let us know. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.